Is anyone truly surprised by this headline? The fact that Western critics, predominantly white people I might add, are upset that the game Ghost of Tsushima is getting rave reviews from Japanese audiences. The audience that these Western critics, predominantly white people, are upset that they aren't getting the same level of anger from. Am I missing something here? Hello, this is Mara Jade, and I'm here with another video, and like clockwork, people are coming out of the woodwork, SJWs are coming out of the woodwork, hell-bent on calling this game racist because of its depiction of ancient samurai culture taking uh, cues from historical events, actual historical events from the Mongolian invasion in 1274 of the island of Tsushima, that the Japanese audiences that this game is so, sort of based around love it. Like I said, am I missing something? But anyway, let's go into this article that I found on Bounding Into Comics and let's see what these fucking morons are saying about this whole situation. Some of them are doozies. Alright. Ghost of Tsushima has been received overwhelmingly positively by Japanese audiences since its release, much to the dismay of Western critics seeking to spark discourse around the game. Pretty much claiming it's racist, uh, whatever. Basically claiming you know, like, you know, it poorly depicts Japanese culture. What Pick a reason, pick a reason, but probably predominantly, predominantly is because it doesn't have any agenda to it. Any agenda to it. It's simply a revenge tale. And there's nothing wrong with a simple story as long as the story itself is engaging, as long as the characters are engaging, as long as the gameplay is good, as long as the visuals are good, that's all that matters. And it doesn't push any agenda. Like I said, the tale is simple. You play as a samurai who is bent on revenge against the Mongolian invaders. I'm not going to go too deeply into the plot of the game, but that's the gist, pretty much. That's the gist. Simple. But it's fun. And these people are upset about the fact Japanese audiences aren't getting as upset as they are. If I were Japanese, I actually would be offended at that. But let's go into this, shall we? All right. On July 15th, Kotaku published an article discussing how Ghost of Tsushima is being praised by Japanese critics, compiling rave reviews received by the game from notable Japanese review sites, which detailed how the critical consensus is that Ghost of Tsushima does an admirable job of bringing 13th century Japan to life. That's it. That's, that's the goal, pretty much. Bring it to life. It doesn't have to be entirely necessarily historically accurate, but at the same time, be historically accurate enough with the simple revenge tale, and boom, you have a good game. Good visuals, good characters, good story. What's to complain about? Here's what's to complain about. First one, taking place in 1274, Ghost of Tsushima follows samurai Jin Sakai as he defends the titular Tsushima island from the invading Mongol forces led by Kublai Khan. Actual historical events. Actual historical events. Alright? The Japanese eventually repelled the Mongols, handing the invaders one of their most decisive military defeats, leading to a resurgence in Japanese power and presence on the world stage. Historical events. Pretty much. Alright, in modern times, the successful repulsion of the Mongols is heralded as a point of Japanese natural, nationalistic pride, garnering high praise from leading outlets such as Akiba, Suken, Denge Dengeki Online, sorry if I'm butchering any names, and Engadget Japan. Ghost of Tsushima's highest accolade has been its awarding of a rare 40 out of 40 score from Weekly, weekly Famitsu. I mean, I don't know, Last of Us Part Two got perfect scores. So why is it upsetting that this game got a perfect score? Sucker Punch's samurai-themed historical action game is the only the third Western game to receive a perfect score from Japan's most popular video game news source following the Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, and Grand Theft Auto V. Again, it got a perfect score. Last of Us Part II did as well. So why, what is any different? Other than what, anyone who knows what I've been talking about with Last of Us Part II of that game, pretty much. However, Japan's enjoyment of a Western-made title based on their history did not sit right with Western critics who feared that Japanese acceptance of the title would render any criticism based on a critical social justice theory baseless. So basically, the Japanese are saying, fuck your SJW politics, this is a good game, we love it. And you got these SJWs, predominantly white, 
predominantly white, not all white, but predominantly so, who are upset at the fact that the Japanese audiences are not getting upset. They're actually ups they're actually wanting the Japanese to feel the same way they feel. God forbid anyone, not, you know, just not solely the Japanese, but anyone have any form of free thought. They're, these people, SJWs, are all about freedom of speech, freedom of opinion, tolerance. But you step outside that little bubble of accepted free th um, thoughts, and you are guilty. Exactly what they're doing to Japanese audiences, which I feel is very fucking racist. The first to take issue with Japan's reception of the game was Gene Park, video game reporter from the Washington Post. This is why, this is why I very much, very much dislike um, professional critics within the gaming industry. They are a joke. And here's one gem of an example. Who lamented how Kotaku's article will be used in bad faith to defend the game against criticism. If there's something legitimate to criticize about a game, people are going to criticize it. If there's something that people can find worthy enough to criticize about, they're not going to do it. Specifically because Asians will have different perspectives than Asian Americans. Again, while I can kind of see a little bit, because there are slight cultural differences between the two, you know, America and Japan, very racist. Very, very racist. So here's his tweet. There's going to be more critical discourse around Ghost of Tsushima, and this link will be used in bad faith to defend the game against criticism. No, no, it's just saying, like, people, people in Japan are loving it. People in the Japanese audiences are loving it. This is a game centered around an historical event in Japanese history. You'd think, you'd think they'd be the ones that you would want to at least... Um, gear the game towards to make sure that they're the ones not getting upset. And they're not. But that's a bad thing. I, 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 I have no idea. I, I can't speak right now. The, the, this, the fucking stupidity is just off the charts with this one. <sighs> Asians will have different perspectives than Asian Americans. It's not complicated. Again, kind of, you know, balkanizing them, and so forth. Asian Americans have the right idea who are complaining about this game, while Asians not complaining about it, they're in the wrong. Oh, Lord. Park's sentiment was soon echoed by like-minded players, many of whom were white or Asian American, who similarly feared that the lack of Japanese outrage towards the game would invalidate their Western-centric critical race theory-based criticism. Basically, their Western-centric bullshit, pseudo-psychological dumbfuckery. It's basically what it is. Pretty much what it is. And here's this one's tweet. Literally anyone who criticizes this game is now going to have to deal with people pointing to this like Japanese nationals' opinions on this bullshit invalidates their own. I'm so furious. It doesn't necessarily invalidate your own, albeit your own your opinion is stupid, I might add, in my in my opinion. It does not invalidate it, but you getting upset at the fact that they have an opposing opinion is what's making you look like a dumb fucking idiot. So many people have been dying for games to be taken more seriously, and the second that happens, they realize what all that entails. I'm so tired. What the fuck does that even mean? I love how they try to sound intellectual, and they come off sounding more like the dumbasses they are. They have no idea what they're talking about. They just regurgitate the facts that they were indoctrinated with in college nowadays, and you don't sound smart. You don't sound smart. At all. Here's one. I'm so exhausted because Japanese nerdum media has had a problem with glorifying Japanese nationalism for like basically forever and it's not like it's a secret that Japanese fascists exist. Oh, they're Japanese fascists now. I'd like to add that those in Japan have a stake in this. This is a story they want told. Non-Japanese Asian and Asian Americans who suffered at the hands of Japanese imperialism will feel very differently, which to an extent is true. Anyone, uh, I would recommend if you are at all interested in World War II history, 
particularly in the uh, specific Pacific Theater, and I'm not going into politics or anything like that, but prisoners of the Japanese will give you an idea of where this person is coming from. But that's not to say that those people are, are going to be necessarily the ones playing the game, because as much respect as I have towards veterans, especially the greatest generation, they're not the ones playing the game, and it's not set in in, in World War II. It's set in the 1274 samurai, when the samurai were still around. Kind of a different perspective. But moving on. I really love, and they put like, you know, love in the asterisks, it when Asian Americans raise serious concerns on an issue when white people go behind our backs to Asia and ask Asians, actually, actually ask Asians, have the fucking gall to actually ask Asians what people in Asia think about a game set in fucking Japan. Hmm. <sighs> This sentiment quickly received mass amounts of pushback from the wider gaming community as players noted that not only was the game based on real historical events, no fucking shit, but that it, these complaints were based in bad faith desires for controversy. Basically, they want the agenda, they want the controversy, they want to have their little brownie points in the game so that way they can say, oh, that's exactly what I agree with. And panders to whatever pseudo-psychological, pseudo-intellectual theory they like to espouse. Like here, hang on, are you actually angry Japanese people aren't mad? And here, this one, how dare the Japanese not be offended by a game that treats their culture with respect just because it was made by Western developers. Ah, yes, great and oh-so-smart American man. Please tell the people of Japan how they should feel. And this one also corrects them on their history, saying it's not a fantasy where the Mongols succeeded. They actually landed in Tsushima and killed thousands. You're thinking of mainland Japan, which is thousands of miles off. Do research before calling it a Japanese nationalist fantasy. He basically corrects them. Ghost of Tsushima is now available exclusively for the PlayStation 4, which, incidentally, I'm in the process of downloading as we speak. So there it is, folks. There it is. Like clockwork, like clockwork, like co cockroaches they are. They're coming out of the woodwork, <laughs> predictably upset that their criticisms are being invalidated because the, the audience that you would want to make happy, because this game is centered in ancient... Uh, around, around, centered on ancient Japanese culture, are giving it rave reviews. Go figure. But at any rate, let me know down in the comments below. Have you gotten the game? Are you planning on getting it? If you haven't gotten it, let me know. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Valid criticisms, if you have them, let me know down in the, those down in the comments. I don't know if Drunk 3 Beale will be having his Monday stream tonight. If he does have it, I can only be on for about an hour or so because I have to get up super early tomorrow morning so I won't be able to stay up late. Wednesday evening, I'm planning a general live stream with a members-only one to follow, and perhaps another members-only stream to uh, follow that on Friday evening. So tune in for that when I have that uh, together. I'm also going to be working on more badges for my channel members as well as emojis. So stay tuned for those. I have uh, four more emojis I can do, I believe, and uh, also four more badges I can do. So between now and Wednesday, I'll be working on that. So if you like this content, leave a thumbs up. Share on social media, if you will. I need all the validation I can get because I am a whammon, as you can see. And so tune in for my next video and or live stream. Sometime this week, I will start playing this game, and I'll let you know how I feel, and maybe a video review, or maybe on a live stream. So until then, this is Mara Jade. Catch you on the dark side.